Hello everyone, I'm very excited about this video because I have a very special guest joining me. Uh, he's Dr. Tom from Oxford University, he's a math professor there. He also has a YouTube channel, Tom Rocks Math. Yes. And what we are going to be doing today is to <laughs> solve a math problem, the same problem but using different approaches and uh, hopefully discuss uh, the thought process and why we each chose the way we are doing uh, the problem, the way we will be doing it. So uh, before we get started, Dr. Tom, would you like to introduce yourself to my viewers? Absolutely. It's a real pleasure to, to be joining you today, Dennis. Um, and as you say, I'm, I'm joining here from Oxford, where I teach maths to the undergraduate students. Uh, and when I'm not teaching, like, like yourself, I'm making YouTube videos sure. on my channel, Tom Rocks Maths. And I also do lots of videos for Numberphile okay. um, as well, um, which is rather exciting. I used to watch Numberphile when I was a student. So it's amazing to think that I now am able to contribute to such an amazing um, maths channel. So yes, I, I do have some problems for you today. I think we've, we've been having a bit of a chat about some of the, uh, you called them some of the problems that a lot of your students um, seem to find difficult. So hopefully, I, I thought it would be quite nice if we can, between us, sort of put our heads together and try and help all of you watching this um, with some of our top tips, both as teachers, um, to help you solve these problems. So the first one um, that I've got for you, the first one I've got for you, Dennis, um, is actually an inequality. So what I would like you to solve, I'll write it on the board, is going to be x divided by x plus 1 needs to be less than or equal to x minus 2 over x plus 3. And I would like to know for what values of x is this inequality true? Okay, so this is a great one and, and I actually do love inequalities. So I hope this will be an interesting one for uh, the viewers and, and myself while doing it. Uh, the first thing I would love to say before I start this is that I think a common pitfall for students here would be to yep. uh, try and cross multiply this, which is uh, a very unsafe operation, uh, I should say, because we don't know the value of x in the first place. And um, whatever that value of x is, since we don't know it, we are not sure what the result of this expression and this one right here will be. So if we just cross multiply there could be a possible uh, change of the sign of the inequality there could be a possible reverse of the inequality and we wouldn't be able to notice that so that's uh, not the best thing to start with here I would rather do an operation that is safe and uh, what I'm going to do here would be to try and bring this to the right hand side my approach by the way is to try and think of this uh, sort of from first principles and what actually this means. Uh, I'll, I'll come to that in a moment. So let me just pull this to the left hand side. So I have x divided by x plus 1 less than, oh, I, I, I meant to do this, minus x minus 2 divided by x plus 3 less than or equal to 0. And uh, this makes a lot of sense to me now because it means whatever value of x I find for this expression, if I plug it in here, it should be able to give me something that is less than zero. In other words, it should be able to give me a negative value. I'm looking for something that some value of x or some values per se, that if I plug them in here, what I'll get will be a value that is negative. Okay, that's very important for the way I'm thinking about this. So going forward, let's, uh, let me just uh, uh, try to simplify this right here. The LCM is x plus 1 into x plus 3. Uh, so right here I have x into x plus 3 minus x minus 2 into x plus 1 less than or equal to 0. And from here I'll have x squared minus... 3x yep. Yep. Very good. minus, let me just open this bracket here, uh, just put this inside. So this is x squared uh, minus x, uh, that's plus x, uh, minus 2x minus 2, 
all this divide by x plus 1 times x plus 3 and this is less than or equal to 0 there we go and uh, I see this is cancelling out with this it's always nice in mathematics when things begin to cancel out nicely like this I mean it feels that good um, I hope this was a plus because this is plus here okay so now we have 3x and um, right here we have negative x sorry x minus 2x yeah that's minus x so 3x plus x that's going to be 4x then this and this that's going to be a plus 2 all this divide by what do we have down here x plus 2 um into x plus uh, that's x plus 1 x plus 1 into x plus 3 okay there we go less than or equal to 0 and like i said i'm looking for a value of x such that if I plug that value into this expression, I have to get a negative value. That's what I'm looking for. So uh, I would want to first find what I would like to call the critical values, values that can make this to be either zero or, you know, to blow up the whole thing. Um, so the critical values, and that's very easy to find. I'll just equate every part of the expression to zero. So x equals minus a half will make this zero. So the entire thing will be zero. So it's interesting to find what happens on the left and right hand side of this value here. Um, x equals negative one and x equals uh, negative three. Those are also sort of um, uh, vertical asymptotes for this. Uh, if, 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 if I was to plot this curve here. so. Uh, it's interesting to see what happens to the left and, and right hand sides of, of these two values here. So I'm going to, let me represent this on a number line. I think that, that's the easiest way to see this visually. Okay, so starting with the smallest one, uh, let's have negative three and then negative one, negative one half. And just to be clear, this represents a region where x is less than negative 3. Okay, this represents a region where x is between negative 3 and 1. This represents a region where x is between negative 1 and negative 1 half. And this represents a region where x is greater than negative 1 half. Okay, so to find out what happens to the inequality or specifically to this expression uh, for each of these regions, I will just choose any uh, arbitrary value in the region and test it inside here. So let's choose a value that is less than negative 3, maybe negative 5. Uh, put that here and here, just put in wherever there is x here. Let's see what that will be if I have negative 5, that will yeah. be negative 20 plus 2, that, that's definitely a negative. And down here I'll have a, a negative and a negative, that's a positive. So the result here is going to be a negative. Okay, so the result will be a negative. And look, we're looking for a value of x or uh, um, a range of x values which can give us a negative value when plugged in here. So we already have one of the regions that satisfy the inequality, all values of x less than negative 3. Hmm, that's a good one. Uh, let, let's look at the next region, x between negative 3 and negative 1. Okay, I'll choose a value of negative 2, that's sort of the average here. Um, so if I choose negative 2, this will be negative 8 plus 2, definitely a negative. Down here I'll have um, a negative times a positive so the result here is a negative and if I divide the two I'll have a positive so uh, this region does not satisfy because I want something that will give me a negative okay uh, let's look at the next region negative one and negative um, negative one half mm, I could choose maybe negative three quarters so if I choose negative three quarters, let's see, this is going to be uh, a negative. Yeah. Uh, just write that sort of here. A negative, 
I hope so. Down here, if I choose negative 3 over 4, uh, this is going to be uh, a, a positive, and this is going to be a positive. So the result will be uh, negative divided by positive, which is obviously a negative. And yes, we have another region here that satisfies the inequality. Let's look at x greater than 1 and uh, negative 1 half. Let's choose a value like 0. If I plug in 0 here, uh, this is going to be positive, positive everywhere. So that's just going to be a positive. And uh, yeah, so we have two regions that satisfy our inequality. And I can conclude that the uh, your question was for what values of x uh, is this inequality true? Uh, and I would say those values are values of x less than negative 3 or uh, values, in fact, not just or, but rather and values of x, oops, values of x between negative 1 and negative 1 half. And for this specific question, I think the boundary values themselves are acceptable because, you know, we have that um, less than or equal to uh, sign here. So yeah, these are the values of x that will allow our uh, our inequality to be true. So I sort of love to follow this way of doing uh, such problems because yeah. because it it sounds more natural to me and I don't need a lot of skill sets. I mean, it's it's just very simple algebra and uh, sort of understanding what this inequality means in terms of integers and, and that's all the skill set I need for this. And I think that would make it uh, uh, very easy to and kind of intuitive to understand what, what's happening uh, as, as I solve this inequality. And if I haven't done any mistakes, this should be the answer. Yeah, no, that's perfect. That's exactly, that's what I thought the answer was. And it was very interesting for me to, um, to see your method because I did this a completely different way when I was solving this problem. So I won't go through every step, but I think I'll show you the because I used a graph. So I think I'll talk through uh, my thought process. Again, I won't show every step, but just in general, how, how I thought about this, because clearly, despite us both being mathematicians, and this is the joy of maths, right? We, we solve okay. the same problem in completely different ways. And this is why this is why maths is so creative and so fun. So so as I said, I actually, I actually did this using um, plots of, of these functions. So I started by, by simplifying both functions. So, and what I mean by that was saying, here I can write That's this true. as one minus one over x plus one. So rather than putting it over a common denominator, separating it into those two fractions. And then for the second one, you can do a similar thing and say this is going to be one. And then I think now you want to do minus five over x plus three. So you can double check my algebra, people watching, but that should be the same inequality, just sort of split up. And now what I'm going to do is plot these two functions because we're interested in when the one on the right hand side is above the one on the left, if I were to plot both of these. And I found this to be um, an intuitive way to think about this. So I'm just going to get two other colors. So. So I've got my different colored chalk. So I'm going to start with, let's do this one, which we'll do in red. So this function, so I want to plot y equals this. So as when x is 0, it's 1 minus 1, so it goes through 0. So I know it goes through the origin. And then I also know that when x goes to infinity, this is 1 over infinity, so that's tending to 0. Exactly. So this is going to approach from below, it's going to approach the asymptote y equals 1. So this function is going to kind of do this, like this. So it never quite gets to 1, but it's tending from below. And I know it's from below because I know its value is 0 here. So it can't cross that. And then going into the negative values, I know you cannot possibly have x equal to minus 1. Because if x is minus 1, it goes down to minus infinity. So I know that here, I need another asymptote at x equals minus 1, and this is going to come down like this. Yeah. And then from the, the symmetry of these graphs, having plotted several rational functions before, 
And again, this, you get used to these as working as a mathematician. You know that up here you're going to have the same behavior like this. So this is the left-hand function. So now we're going to do the same. So now we're going to do the same to plot the right-hand function, and I'll do this one in blue. So again, um, it doesn't go through 1 now. When x is 0, it's 1 minus 5 thirds, so it's minus 2 thirds. So it's down here, minus 2 thirds. Um, and it can't, its asymptote now is minus 3. So this is where your values of minus 1 and minus 3 that you were checking on your number line are appearing on my graph. So, and again, this one is also approaching from below. Uh, towards 1. As x goes to infinity, this is coming from below. But this one, you're subtracting more, because you're subtracting like 5 divided by a really big number, whereas here you're subtracting 1 over a really big number. So the blue one's always below the red one, as I sort of go through here. So it tends to it, but it's always below it. So the red one is always bigger than the blue. So this region, exactly as you found, Dennis, this region isn't, isn't satisfying the inequality. And then here, though, these, of course, are going to intersect. And then you get the asymptote at minus 3. OK, that's not the most accurate sketch I've ever done, but that's a, the blue curve. And then you've got the same thing happening up here, where the blue curve uh, is coming in from above. But now the, um, let me think about this. So here, which one's going to be below which one? So we've got one. We're adding on a more positive, so the blue's always above the red here. But they're both turning to this asymptote. So now you've got the plots, we can answer the question. So, um, so to answer the actual question, when is the red one below the blue one? We can see the red one is below the blue between this intersection point and minus 3, uh, sorry, and minus 1, because you can't go past minus 1. So I don't know the intersection yet, but fortunately you worked it out, and it was minus a half. And you can solve for that, so you would just put these two equal, and then solve algebraically, and that would tell you that minus a half is your intersection. And you can do that just to find that one point. So once we've got that, we now know that this is true for x between minus 1 and minus a half, which is what you found, Dennis. And then again, we can see the red one is below the blue one. Um, it's below the blue one from minus 3 onwards. So between minus 1 and minus 3, the red one's up here, the blue one's down here. So that's not allowed. As soon as you pass through minus 3, the blue one is above the red one again. So for x less than or equal to minus 3. So those two regions, which are exactly the same you found, um, but as I said, I just did it by, by, drawing, by drawing the functions, but I guess that's because I'm more familiar with curve sketching. So it depends on the skills, obviously depends on the tool set that you have as a, as a mathematician and as a student. Uh, yes, thanks Dr. Tom for doing this. It's really been an honor to work with you and I have to say this oh, has <laughs> been a very interesting session. Uh, seeing all these different ways on how we can actually solve the same problem but using different approaches. Uh, for all the viewers, if you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and uh, subscribe to my channel. Uh, don't forget to head over to Dr. Tom's channel and um, uh, take a look at his content, subscribe, uh, leave uh, some comments on his videos and make sure to tell him that you came from my channel. Uh, I'll see you in my next video. Uh, bye.